test, test. Okay. Oh, you're going to record by. Um, going to so record it, yeah. Fine. Uh, okay, so thanks, Andrew, for uh, giving me this interview. You're welcome. So, this is a set of expert insight questions. So, the first question is what got you interested in well being research? In the early 90s, one of the things that uh, attracted me was I thought we could use well being data to try to answer the question of whether unemployment was voluntary or involuntary. That's one thing that drew me in. And second, just generally, I realized that it was possible to get happiness surveys, and that just seemed to me a very interesting thing to do. And I, I remember the first time an equation came out where happiness was increasing in income, and I thought, hmm, we're, we're definitely on to something here. That's great. Um, so, what do you take well-being to mean? I'm quite happy to listen to people when they answer survey questions, so I, I don't want to force my idea of well-being onto them. I would say um, a feeling of joy and also broader contentment with your life, but in my work I've come to the conclusion that, at least in large samples, it doesn't much matter whether we ask people life satisfaction, mental health, happiness right now, and so on. That the, the question is not all that important, though I remain open to the possibility that I might change my mind with future data sources. Uh, so why is well-being research important in your opinion? It seems to me that if you're a social scientist, uh, an economist say, then this is the most important thing there is. What could be more important than understanding <laughs> human well-being? Unless you have very powerful views about ethical stance on animals, yeah. unless you, you're in that special category, and I know some people are, human well-being is the most important topic in social science. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's good. Uh, so, what is the most important well-being related finding to date? It's not easy to say what the most important well-being finding is. Um, I do think that age U-shape is an extremely intriguing result and might tell us something very profound about human beings. Other ones that come to my mind are the importance of relationships like marriage, mm -hmm. the way that humans bounce back from things like bereavement, and the fact that well-being is increasing in income is, a, seems to me, a very important fundamental finding. Oh, I second that. <laughs> what is the most important application of well-being research to our lives? Well-being applications haven't come through terribly strongly yet. Mm -hmm. This is, um, in some, by some measures, this is a relatively new branch of social science. And I think that the big applications will be to valuing green factors, environmental factors in our lives. I think that the economics of happiness methods are going to revolutionize our attitudes to the green movement. They'll also be used in the courts for valuing subtle things, um, emotions from important life events. Mm -hmm. And there will be a replacement of GDP by a well-being index towards the end of my life, or even perhaps earlier. Okay. Um, so what are you working on right now? Right now, I'm working on the happiness of non-human primates. Mm -hmm. Amazingly enough, I never expected to do that. <laughs> I'm trying to understand using ra randomized methods, how much government policy can raise the happiness of a country's citizens. Yeah. Not an easy thing to do for a, for a country. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, so just a couple more questions. Uh, what do you think uh, the next big thing in well-being research will be? I think the next big thing is likely to be linking up with the hard sciences and exactly how that will be done is hard to say. It could be a link with genes, could be a link with human biology, could even be a link with the study of animals, non-human animals and humans. But by its nature, predicting the next big thing is awfully hard. Thank you. Oh, as you know, our, our journal is very interdisciplinary. So what would be, what in your opinion, is, are the main benefits of interdisciplinary research on well-being? 
I would turn the question around, I suppose, or I tend to when people ask me this type of question. Well-being is an incredibly interesting and important subject, and different disciplines are going to look at well-being and think about it from different angles. Presumably each angle has part of the truth. So by the nature of this subject, you can't say it is for psychologists, it is for economists, it is for medical researchers, physiologists, it's not for anybody, it's just well-being is and has the, these multiple aspects and and that's why it's such a good topic for a blending of disciplines. Sounds good. So the last two questions. Uh, what would the ideal census question on well-being be and why? I don't think it makes too much difference in large samples, though I remain open to the possibility that I'll have to revise my view. Mm -hmm. I am quite content at the moment with a question like, how happy do you feel right now? Mm. That would be fine. In the long run, I believe those kinds of answers will be blended with physiological or brain science measures of the happiness of individuals. Um, okay, well, is there anything else would you like to comment on? I... Uh, I think we will go over more and more to the construction of randomized experiments in some sort of longitudinal data setting with scientific measures, hard science measures of what's, what goes on inside humans that's out of their control, that is to truly objective data blended with subjective data. Thank you so much, Andrew. That's it, really. So, bottoms up. <laughs>